Foreign Minister Penny Wong will meet her Chinese counterpart Wang Yi later today. It's the first face-to-face -face meeting between Australian and Chinese foreign ministers for almost three years. But the federal government is playing down any hopes of a significant breakthrough in the troubled relationship. Foreign Affairs reporter Stephen Jejets joins us now from Canberra. Stephen, g'day. So when and where is this meeting happening and how significant is it? Uh, we expect it to be later this evening, Joe, around 8pm Sydney time or 6pm Bali time. This is actually happening on the sidelines of the G20 foreign ministers meeting in Bali. So that's another thing that we have to put out here to put this in context. This isn't a formal sit down bilateral. Penny Wong isn't going to China and Wang Yi isn't coming to Australia. This is essentially a brief opportunistic pull aside, if you like, where they can have a, a chat on the sidelines of a much broader meeting. And Wang Yi has had several such meetings uh, over the last couple of days with a, a number of foreign ministers. That said, this is significant. As you mentioned in the introduction, this is the first face-to-face -face meeting for almost three years. It was around September 2019 when uh, Maurice Payne and Wang Yi last actually met. They did speak over the phone a few times after that, including for the last time in January 2020, uh, while uh, COVID was just starting to ripple through, uh, through Wuhan. Um, but that was pretty much the last contact we've had between between Australian ministers, uh, foreign ministers and Chinese foreign ministers since then. Not long after that, of course, the relationship began its rapid deterioration. We saw the furious response from the Chinese government to Australia's call for an independent inquiry into the COVID-19 outbreak. We then saw a series of trade punishments doled out by China uh, and things really went pretty you know, rapidly downhill after that. So the fact that there is now discussion, the fact that Richard Miles and now Penny Wong actually have access to their Chinese counterparts and the fact that high level dialogue is beginning is in itself significant because it shows that there's an appetite in Beijing to begin that high level political discourse which could potentially open the door to further compromises and rapprochement in the relationship. But taking into account that you describe it as basically a bit of a pull aside during another summit, what are the chances of a significant reset for the relationship from this? Look, I don't think anyone expects a significant reset out of one meeting. And, and the Australian government has made it pretty clear that it's going in with pretty modest expectations. For example, no one's expecting that China is going to use this opportunity to unwind some of those tariffs that it's placed on Australian goods. Nor are we likely to get any announcements about those two Australians who have been at the centre of so much attention uh, after being detained in, uh, in China. No one's expecting an announcement of them being freed. There are still deep structural problems problems in the Australia-China relationship. And that doesn't really come down to diplomacy. That comes down to the fact that there are simply different attitudes in China and in Australia and a real clash of interests across multiple fronts. So this meeting isn't going to solve those problems. This meeting won't see a sudden deep rapprochement, but it might still be a first step towards perhaps unwinding some of those trade sanctions and trying to put the relationship into some sort of normalcy. Let's take a listen to Richard Miles, the Deputy Prime Minister, describe what Australia would like out of the meeting earlier today. Power of diplomacy and, and a change of tone matters and, and we're, we'll bring that to bear and it, and it takes us as far as it takes us but that's how we're going to go about it. We're not going to do the chest beating that we saw from the former government um, which frankly didn't take us anywhere and didn't advance our national interest in any way. So as you can hear there, a bit of expectations management from Richard Miles. Yes, they're happy to be meeting, but no, Australia is not going to give ground on any of those core issues. If China insists Australia has to do that in order to make some sort of serious repair to the relationship, then we may well still be stuck in a holding pattern. But at least they're talking. OK, we'll leave there. Stephen Jedgett's in Canberra.